Hello, my name is Ellen Dowling, and I'm the Environmental Educator with City of Monroe. Today, we are going to create and decorate our own caddisfied larva in case. Here's a list of supplies you will need for today's craft. I will go over a few different options at each step so that you can do this with whatever items you have available to you. If you haven't already collected your decorating items, please wait until I go over some more details and I will give you time to pause the video and gather your supplies and then you can return. Today, we're gonna to focus on a little insect called a caddisfly. Caddisflies are really neat because not only do they undergo complete metamorphosis, which means they transform from an immature form into an adult form in distinct stages, as you can see by these very different pictures, but they also spend their larval or their earlier stage living underwater, and then they transform into a flying insect as an adult. Today's craft involves the larval form because they can be used to assess water quality in streams. Only some types of caddisflies construct these cases to live, both for protection and for camouflage. If you've already collected your decorated egg, it's great. Close your eyes for a minute and think about the mini environment in which you collected your objects. Where environment means the surroundings or conditions where an animal lives. If you haven't collected yet, remember when gathering outside, always go with the three Ds, dead, detached, and decomposing. We are collecting items off the ground, not picking. Here are a few examples of things I collected right outside my office and also in my craft room scrap bin. For collecting, it could be right outside your door, it could be in your craft room, or maybe even in your recycle bin. You could also just draw different objects on your caddisfly case. Pause the video here if you need to collect any items and resume it once you've gathered your supplies. If you are drawing your caddisfly by hand, I'm gonna do a quick sped up version of me drawing. Feel free to pause the video to draw your larva and resume the video once you've fully drawn an outline and we can cut out and decorate our caddisflies together. Remember, all insects have three body parts. I started with the head and I'm now working on the thorax and now I'm moving to the abdomen at the end. Next time you look at an ant, they're really good to be able to see insect anatomy because they have three distinct sections and you can see that all six legs come off of the middle or the thorax, which is also where the wings would come off if your insect has wings. As I mentioned, there are different kinds of caddisflies and not all of them make cases, but they do produce silk to construct their cases, or they spin nets to catch food similar to spiders. Right now, I'm adding feathery parts, which are called gill tufts. They use gills to breathe oxygen dissolved in the water when they're larvae, just like fish. Now I'm gonna add the eyes, that part's the head, that part's the thorax, and that part's the abdomen. Okay. Now you have two options. You can either make a 2D version where you have a flap that you're gonna decorate as the case, or you can make a 3D version where there's the case is a tube. While I'm explaining the version that you're not working on today, you can color in your caddisfly larva body. I'm gonna start with the 2D version. If you've got your printouts, um, you can get the page that says caddisfly larva shells and you just need one of them. But I'm gonna make my own. So I'm gonna cut the piece of paper in half or you could use a separate piece of paper. You will wanna measure out the strip that shows the back end where there's actually some hooks on the end. And you also wanna show the front legs. So you're just gonna make a mark. You're gonna make a cut where you've just marked that piece of paper to make your strip and then attach it with a glue stick. For the 3D version, I'm going to cut all around the caddisfly larva. So don't cut off any of those legs or gills or even the um, hooks at the back on the abdomen. And then I'm going to make a roll. So basically we're going to again mark in between where the front legs and the hooks are to make a strip of paper. It's going to need to fit whatever size caddisfly larva you just drew. So you're going to measure all the way around the caddisfly, cut out, and we're not going to attach it yet because it's going to be easier to decorate while it's flat. But I'm going to check and make sure my larva fits in. And then I'm actually going to not decorate the bottom where it's going to sit on my desk, 
So I'm going to make some marks so I know which pieces that I don't really need to add decoration to. Here are a few examples of the Caswell Lagrange cases that I made. The middle version is this 2D or flat version, and the 3D versions are things I found on the ground outside my office. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a few tips for the 3D version here. First, I'm going to color in the area so I can see where I'm going to try and avoid decorating. It's a little hard to see on the screen, but I can see it. Then I'm going to remind myself which way the paper rolls into a tube. So when I attach longer things like this leaf, they don't break. So you're going to try to put them in the direction that the tube is long so that they won't break when you roll it up. You can use a glue stick for some items that are flat and lightweight, but liquid glue is going to work better for 3D objects like bark or acorns or maybe even pine needles like I'm adding to mine here. I'm going to actually hop on over and work on my 2D version and then I will come back to wrap up the 3D version after everyone's all done decorating. For the 2D version, I'm just going to add items to that flap we attached. As I mentioned, only some types of cabin flies build cases, which are usually constructed from anything nearby so that they blend into their surroundings really well for their environment. And they can hide from predators and protect themselves because they have kind of a soft body. Caddis flies that don't construct cases are called net spinners because they spin nets that they use to catch food. Net spinner caddis flies are considered ecosystem engineers because their silk strands can help stabilize the stream bed, it helps reduce erosion, and it helps create habitat for other macroinvertebrates. Okay, let's break that down. Macroinvertebrates, macro means large enough to see with your eye, so you don't need a microscope, and invertebrate means they don't have a backbone. In freshwater streams, this commonly includes many larval or nymph stages of insects, as well as some aquatic invertebrates live their entire lives in the stream, like clams, mussels, snails, and crayfish. Caddis by larva live in streams for one to two years. When it's time, they seal themselves into their case, they pupate, and then they, once they're transformed, they crawl out as a winged adult. The reason I chose this crap today is because caddis fly larvae are bioindicators. That means that they can help us indicate whether the stream is healthy, depending on if they're happy living in it. The case making caddis fly larvae, as well as mayfly and stonefly nymphs, are sensitive to pollution and they like high levels of oxygen dissolved in the water. While other kinds of organisms, like midge fly and black fly larvae, are pollution tolerant, which means they can survive in a wider range of water quality. So scientists and volunteers can sample streams where they collect, they sort, identify, and count these macroinvertebrates to see which type they can find to judge the overall health of the stream. These are looking for high biodiversity, meaning many different types of macroinvertebrates and a higher quality of pollution sensitive individuals. Depending on what you have attached and how much glue you have used, you may want to watch how I finish the case if you made the 3D version, but leave yours to dry for now, and then you can roll it up later. To finish the 3D case, you're going to grab your tape, you're going to roll your tube up, make sure you leave that blank space at the bottom so that it can still fit your caddis fly once you've taped it shut, and then it will be able to move in. Just add tape on both ends. There he is. If you want to learn more about protecting water quality and preventing stormwater pollution in your neighborhood, check out the Stormwater Services website for the City of Monroe. Thanks so much and have a great day with all of your activities today.